Okay, everybody. So it's a little bit after four and we are going to get started. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today for Every Musician Insured, Finding Affordable Coverage During a Pandemic. And thank you so much to everybody at Local 802 who has done so much work to make this happen. Um, we're happy to have you all here. My name is Renata Marinero. I'm Director of Health Services for the Actors Fund. Um, you might be hearing um, some bells going off. Those are people joining the webinar, so um, that might continue for a little bit. Um, so just a couple things right off the bat. Um, this presentation is about 50 minutes long. I'm going to ask you to stay muted during the presentation because background noise is, can be really distracting. Um, and we've got a lot of people, which is great. Um, so it looks like we've got over 50 people um, on the webinar, which is wonderful. So please stay muted during the presentation. Um, you can put your questions in the chat box. So down at the bottom, usually the bottom or the top of your screen are your Zoom controls. And um, it depends on what version of Zoom you have. Sometimes there's a chat box button. Um, if it's not there, you can click on more and then you'll see the chat. Um, and so if you click on more, you'll see the, the uh, chat function and you can type your questions in the chat box. I will be reading those questions out loud and answering them at the end. This is being recorded. This will be put up online. Um, so you don't have to worry about recording it yourself. It is being recorded. I can't do the presentation and look at the chat box at the same time, FYI. Um, so I will be looking at the chat box at the end of the presentation. Um, so uh, again, welcome to Every Musician Insured. Um, my goal is to turn you all into health insurance ninjas. Um, I uh, am a social worker and I have worked in different healthcare settings in the New York City and Connecticut area, including hospitals and drug rehabs and social, social service agencies um, that uh, help cancer patients. So I've seen how the healthcare system works and how it doesn't always work to benefit the consumer, as I am sure you all are aware. Um, so our goal at health services is to create educated healthcare consumers. This is a for-profit system um, and the best way to approach it is as an educated consumer. Um, just a little bit about how this webinar is gonna go so you know what to expect. Um, at first, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Actors Fund uh, and then we're gonna talk about basic vocabulary. And that's important because we have to be on the same page about this language, this crazy insurance language, right? Um, so we're going to talk about stuff like what is a deductible? What's the federal poverty level? Why, why do we even care about that? Uh, then we're going to talk about um, basic regulations because that will help you understand what your rights are. Um, we're going to talk about when you can enroll because I know quite a few of you are losing coverage outside of the regular open enrollment periods. Um, we're going to talk about open enrollment versus special enrollment. In the middle of the presentation, we're gonna go into great detail about how to estimate your income because that is one of the key aspects of getting affordable coverage. So we're gonna talk about how do you estimate your income if you haven't had any in a while? What do you do? We're gonna talk a lot about that. In the second half of this presentation, we're gonna talk about different programs like Medicaid and the Essential Plan, uh, and qualified health plans, which are also known as Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act Marketplace. We're going to talk about how you pick a plan. And at the end, we're going to talk about what to do if you're uninsured. Where do you get care? How do you find medications at discounted rates? Those kinds of things. Um, this is a national webinar. So I know that we have people from all over the country, which is great. So Everything that I talk about is going to be um, framed nationally. There will be a few things that I discuss that might be particular only to New York State because New York State has a special program that we're gonna talk briefly about. Um, we are not gonna talk about Medicare. So if you are 65 or over, um, please come to our Welcome to Medicare webinar, which is every Monday from one to 2 p.m. Eastern time. 
Medicare is its own beast. Um, it takes an hour just to go through Medicare. So we're not gonna be talking about Medicare. It is for people 65 and over and the disabled. We will be talking about Medicaid though. All right, so let's get started. Um, so what is the Actors Fund? The Actors Fund is a nationwide human services organization that fosters stability and resiliency and provides a safety net for performing arts and entertainment professionals over their lifespan. Never more needed than now, right? The website for the Actors Fund is actorsfund.org. The website for all of our webinars, which are free, is actorsfund.org slash workshops. Actorsfund.org slash workshops. We have four main service areas, social services and financial assistance. So um, social services helps uh, provide emotional and financial support. We do still have COVID grants available. So if you've been affected by COVID in some way, um, you might wanna check out our financial assistance page. You may be eligible. There are guidelines, of course, and eligibility requirements. The Career Center helps people find meaningful sideline work. Health and health insurance helps people understand this crazy system that we have and helps people enroll in coverage. And we also have direct primary and specialty care in Times Square. I'll talk about the Friedman Health Center at the end of this presentation. And housing operates uh, several affordable housing residences um, in New York and LA primarily and helps people find affordable housing. Just a little plug for my program's website, which is actorsfund.org slash A-H-I-R-C, which stands for Artists Health Insurance Resource Center. So we have a lot of um, educational resources on our website. The healthcare tutorials are cute three minute videos that help you understand, for example, how to get affordable dental care, how to lower your drug costs, what, what is Medicaid, what is Medicare. They're literally little, little cartoons um, and uh, they're easy to digest and very consumer friendly. Um, we have other webinars that are archived like help with Medicare costs, etc. We also have our HQ, which is our monthly blog. So check out actorsfund.org slash AHERC. So let's talk about these terms. Um, most people know what a premium is. It is a monthly subscription to your insurance um, or sometimes paid quarterly. Um, other countries do this differently. Uh, we ask that people pay a certain amount every month to have insurance. Um, a deductible is what you pay up front for medical services before your coverage kicks in. So what that means is, let's say you have a deductible of uh, $600 and you need to go see um, some kind of specialist. And um, let's say that your deductible applies to all of the services in your plan. So you go see that specialist and the specialist charges you uh, a, a, what's called a contracted rate or a negotiated rate. Um, but it's a lot of money. It's almost the full price of the service. Um, so let's say that the specialist charges $300 for that office visit. You're paying that full 300 bucks. And let's say that this person says, you know what, I can't figure out what's going on with you without some kind of lab work. So we're gonna uh, need some lab work from you. And the lab charges $300 for the lab work. Now you've paid $600 out of your own pocket and your deductible was $600. So you've met or satisfied your deductible. Think of it as a, as a nasty little monster that needs to be fed before anything you get anything out of the insurance company. So when you go back to the specialist for follow-up care, you don't have to pay those large amounts anymore, right? you're paying what's called a copay or coinsurance. It's also known as cost sharing. So a copay is a flat fee for a service. For example, 25 bucks 
to see a primary care physician or $40 to see a specialist, whatever is listed in your policy. Coinsurance is a percentage of the bill. So coinsurance is listed as a percentage of the medical expense, 20%, 30%, et cetera. So if you had a $300 office visit and you have 20% coinsurance, you're gonna pay $60 when you go back for that follow-up care, right? So copays and coinsurance are known as cost sharing and copays are almost always cheaper than coinsurance because coinsurance reflects the actual medical cost, which is always just ridiculously high. Um, the out-of-pocket maximum is the most that you're gonna spend in a year on medical expenses if you're insured, I wanna make that clear. So this is mandated through the Affordable Care Act and every year it goes up a little bit. And this year, the out-of-pocket maximum for one person is $8,550. That means that if you follow the terms of your insurance contract, then the most that you're gonna spend in one year on medical expenses is $8,550. And sometimes it's less than that. So you can have a lower out-of-pocket maximum. You can't have a higher one. The out-of-pocket maximum includes your deductible and any co-pays or co-insurance. It does not include your premium. So you would have to continue to pay your premium after you've hit your out-of-pocket maximum, but you wouldn't have to pay anything else. You wouldn't have any other you wouldn't have any co-pays or co-insurance. In-network and out-of-network relates to HMOs, EPOs, and PPOs, okay? So HMOs and EPOs are in-network only plans. That means that you go to a list of doctors and labs and hospitals, and if you go to them, you're covered. And if you go to somebody that is not in-network, you're not covered, okay? So you have to go to a doctor that accepts that insurance that you've got. Now you can, uh, if you have a PPO, go out of network, right? So if you have a PPO, you can either stay in network or you can go to somebody that doesn't accept your insurance or doesn't accept any insurance. You can do that if you have a PPO. PPOs are more expensive and they allow you more freedom. HMOs and EPOs are generally cheaper, but you have less freedom in who you can see. Here's the bad news for New Yorkers. Uh, in New York, we do not have any PPOs available to individuals, okay? So if you're going on or off the marketplace, and you'll understand what that means in a minute, in any case, you cannot buy a PPO, cannot get out of network coverage. That's important to remember. That's one reason why you wanna call your doctors and ask them what they're in network with before you sign up for anything. Okay, one way to kind of uh, handle that is if you are traveling and you have an HMO or EPO, you should know a couple things. Once you're out of network, life-threatening emergencies are covered, but nothing else. So they really do mean a life-threatening emergency. That means a stroke, a heart attack, a serious car accident. It does not mean a broken ankle. So if you go to the ER with a broken ankle, it's most likely not gonna be covered. You can Skype with your doctor, it's called telehealth, right? So many insurance companies now cover telehealth. So if you're somewhere else, you can sign up, you can do a telehealth appointment with your doctor back in New York. And you can also have your doctor send the prescriptions that you need to a local pharmacy. You can do all of this under the HMO or EPO, but you can't get other services if you're out of network and have an HMO or EPO. The federal poverty level is what the government thinks you can live on. And I think the government's wrong um, because the government thinks you can live on about a little, little less than $13,000 a year. So the federal poverty level is a little less than $13,000 a year. 
Um, anybody that makes 13,000 or more is not considered poor. Um, we know that nobody can survive on that in this country anywhere. The federal poverty level is used when determining your eligibility for a lot of government programs. So whether you're eligible for subsidies for health insurance or Medicaid or food stamps or whatever, it's all based on where your income is in relation to the federal poverty level. Are you at 100%, 200%, 300%? That's what matters. And that's why I bring it up and it's gonna be abbreviated as FPL in this presentation. The Marketplace or Exchange is a website that you go to and you will see the Marketplace websites come up here shortly on, on slides in a second. The Marketplace takes your household income into account and determines what kind of subsidies or programs you're eligible for. And you can enroll in them through the Marketplace and you can buy insurance either at discounted rates or at full cost on the Marketplace. All of the programs and plans on the marketplace are regulated. They have to follow the Affordable Care Act guidelines. The advanced premium tax credit is exactly that. It's a tax credit that you get in advance to lower the cost of your health insurance premiums. And we're gonna be talking about it in detail towards the end of the presentation. All right, so that is the vocabulary section. What are the rules this year? Um, there are still rules, that's the good news. Insurers cannot refuse coverage to anyone or exclude pre-existing conditions. There's no penalty for being uninsured in New York, but there is a penalty in New Jersey, Massachusetts, Vermont, Washington DC, California, and Rhode Island. If you live in those states, there are state penalties for being uninsured. The Affordable Care Act expanded Medicaid eligibility. What, what does that mean? That means it made it a lot easier for more people to get on Medicaid. So in most states, if you make less than approximately $17,609 a year as a single person, you're gonna be eligible for Medicaid, which is free and very comprehensive. Some states did not expand Medicaid, shame on them. Um, these states are Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Kansas, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. If you live in these states, let your elected officials know that they should expand Medicaid. We're going to talk about Medicaid in detail in the second half of the presentation. Also, insurance companies have to cover preventive services for free, which means mammograms, colonoscopies, pap smears, blood pressure tests, diabetes and cholesterol tests, vaccinations, including COVID vaccinations, and certain other tests. Insurers can't impose annual or lifetime dollar limits on your coverage. So in other words, they can't say, you know what, you have cost us $500,000. We are not paying for you anymore. There's a cap on what you pay. It's your out-of-pocket maximum, not on what the insurance company pays. Insurers have to spend at least 80 cents, and in New York, it's actually 85 cents, of a consumer's premium dollar on actual medical care. In other words, this limits the insurance company's profit margin. It's a pretty radical thing that the Affordable Care Act did. So the Affordable Care Act said, you know what, you guys don't get to spend all this money on yacht vacations for doctors anymore. You actually have to pay for, for medical care. And if the insurance companies don't hit this target, they actually owe you money. They have to refund you money. Just a brief word about what I call junk insurance plans. So there are things called short-term plans and faith-based share plans. They are exempt from the rules that I just talked about. This was something that the prior administration instituted. This may be changed during the current administration, um, but I want you to know that um, short-term plans and faith-based share plans do not have to follow the rules. They can charge you more based on your health status. 
There's no out-of-pocket maximum for you. They don't have to cover basic benefits. They don't have to cover pre-existing conditions and they can retroactively cancel your coverage if you get sick, okay? How do you know you have a short-term plan or a faith-based share plan? Short-term plans are three months long, six months long, or one day shy of one year long. That's how they get around the regulations. Faith-based plans are sold um, by a faith community. So it is a group of people of a certain faith community that get together and um, share medical costs. And because it's a share plan, it's not health insurance and it is not regulated. So they don't have to have, for example, a certain amount of um, money in reserves to pay for claims. They don't have to follow any of those rules. They uh, may um, pray for you, but they may not pay for you. Other signs that this could be junk insurance, they require a membership or some kind of initiation fee or one-time registration fee. Um, it sounds too good to be true. You see the phrase not major medical or you see discounts of up to a certain amount. That's most likely a discount plan. How can you stay away from junk insurance? By going to the marketplace. That's the easiest way to stay away from junk insurance, but you can also go to the National Association of Insurance Commissioners website and check out what is regulated and um, legit in your state, basically. Okay, so let's talk about when you can enroll. So this slide is about when you can normally enroll. So normally there's an open enrollment period one time every year. It's when you can renew your plan, get on a plan, change your plan. It's from November 1st to December 15th of every year in most states. So unfortunately, when you're thinking about the holidays, you should also be thinking about your health insurance. Um, in New York, New Jersey, and California, it's actually three months long, November 1st to January 31st of every year. I say normally because this year it's different. So the current administration has just announced that they will reopen open enrollment for period for people who are uninsured. So anybody using the federal marketplace, and I'll show you that in just a second, has from February 15th to May 15th to enroll. You can see that there are states here that have their own exchanges and their own open enrollment periods. So California has extended open enrollment through May 15th, so has Colorado. Some states like Massachusetts and uh, Maryland and New York have extended it through a certain time in March. Um, so check this out. Um, see if you live in one of these states, you should have an open enrollment period coming up but you also have the ability, oh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, this, is, this is the healthcare.gov website. This is what I was calling the federal marketplace. So if you go to healthcare.gov and you live in a state that uses healthcare.gov uh, for its marketplace applications, then you can apply between February 15th and May 15th. So this is what the website looks like. It's healthcare.gov. And most states use this website as their marketplace website. However, New York does not. New York uses nystateofhealth.ny.gov. That's nystateofhealth.ny.gov. And California uses coveredca.com. That's coveredca.com. We can help you enroll. FYI. Um, so if you live in the eastern and central region, central region includes Minneapolis, Chicago, and New Orleans, as well as Atlanta, um, and of course, New York, New Jersey, etc. Go to actorsfund.org slash AHIRC and fill out the short online form on the website. 
we will have a navigator contact you within two business days to help you enroll. If you live in the Western region, which includes, of course, the whole West Coast, but also Las Vegas and Texas, you can go to ehisca.com. Again, fill out the short online form. You'll find it where it says, for assistance, please contact. It's hyperlinked. It says short online form. Fill out that form. And again, we will have a navigator contact you within two business days to set up an appointment to help you enroll. Okay, so you don't have to do the marketplace on your own. You can, but we can also help you. And all of our services are free. So this is what I was getting to earlier. Um, so if you're losing your coverage through 802 or an employer or another union, um, you have what's called a special enrollment period. So if you don't sign up during open enrollment, you can sign up if you're losing your coverage through a job, employer, or COBRA, if you get married or divorced, if you're pregnant or have a baby, if you move to another state or county, not within the county, but to another one, if you have a change in immigration status, like you get a green card, for example, or if you turn 26 years old and age off your parents' plan. In those situations, you have 60 days from the date that these things happen to enroll in other coverage. It's called a special enrollment period. Again, you have 60 days. Now we recommend that you try to enroll 30 days prior to losing coverage. Why? Because it means that you will most likely have seamless coverage. In other words, you will transition from the coverage that you have now to other coverage without any gap in coverage. So if you can, try to do it 30 days prior to losing coverage. There are exceptions to these rules. So you can apply for insurance at any time. If you're eligible for Medicaid, Medicaid sometimes has different names in different states. In California, it's known as Medi-Cal, but in general, it's known as Medicaid. Um, if you're eligible for the essential plan, which is a New York and Minnesota plan or base plan only. So you can only get the essential plan in New York or Minnesota. If you want to put a kid on child health, the, the child health insurance program, or if you're buying insurance for a small business. In these situations, you don't have to worry about open enrollment or special enrollment. You can enroll at any time. Just have to get a sip of water. All right. So most of you are here because you are not insurance experts. <laughs> um, and you have no idea what's going on out there in the insurance world and you wanna know what your options are. And the nice thing about us is that we have a very broad overview of all of the options. So if you were to go to an agent or a broker um, who had their own you know, private business, they would most likely only know about private insurance. If you went to somebody at the state to apply for some kind of state program, they would only know about that program. But we know about the entire range of insurance options. We can talk to you about private insurance and the marketplace and Medicaid and all of these different programs. So what are your options? Well, if you're losing your coverage through a job or union, you have COBRA as an option, and we'll talk about that in a second. You can buy insurance directly from an insurance company. I don't recommend it because you may be putting yourself at risk for junk insurance by doing that. And the insurance company doesn't care how much money you make or that you just lost your job. They want the same premium every month regardless. They're not gonna give you a discount based on your income. But if you go to the marketplace, um, they will. So they do wanna know what your income is and they will set the premium according to your income. And if your income changes, you can go back into your account and let them know and they will change your premiums. You may also be eligible for Medicaid or the essential plan. Okay, so what is COBRA? COBRA is actually a law that lets you keep your employer or union-based coverage for up to 18 months and sometimes longer. 
Usually you have 60 days to get on COBRA. However, we are in what's called a national emergency. <laughs> and so this time period has been waived. So you can actually get on COBRA at any time. This means that if five months ago you lost your insurance and you were eligible for COBRA and you remained uninsured, you could go back to your employer union and say, hey, I want to get on COBRA now. The thing with that is you have to back pay for those five months. So that situation, it's great that this that they have done this, but that situation is really probably financially only a good idea if in those five months you racked up some major medical bills and paying those COBRA premiums is going to be cheaper than paying that huge hospital bill because COBRA is expensive. You're paying the full cost of your health insurance. If you're interested in getting on COBRA, you do have to go to your union's uh, pension and health department. They are the ones that would help you enroll. The New York State COBRA subsidy program is currently on hold, but we would love it if you guys would advocate for getting it back, uh, uh, for getting it funded. Um, and uh, so just reach out to your state reps. I will have a slide at the very end of the presentation um, on how you can find out who your representatives are. Um, reach out to them and tell them if you live in New York that you would like this program to be refunded. This program pays for half of your COBRA premiums if you are getting your COBRA through an entertainment union and if you meet certain income guidelines. So when you go on the marketplace, what is happening? What are you possibly enrolling in? Well, the marketplace is screening you based on your household size and income for Medicaid, the essential plan in New York and Minnesota, and for the advanced premium tax credit if you're eligible for a qualified health plan. Qualified health plan just means a regulated health insurance plan on the marketplace. That's all that means. Some people will be eligible for subsidies and some people won't. You can buy insurance full cost on the marketplace if you would like to. Regardless of what type of insurance you enroll in, whether it's Medicaid, the essential plan or qualified health plan, all of these things have to be covered, okay? They can't just cover your arms and your legs. They have to cover hospitalization, office visits, drugs, lab work. All of these things are what are known as mandated essential benefits. So let's talk about what you do before you go online, before you sign up on the marketplace. Um, and I'm going to tell you to do something that most people don't think about doing. And I mentioned it already, and that's call ahead and ask your doctors what they're in network with on the marketplace. And the reason why I want you to use that language is because insurance companies have lots of different networks that they use. So if you call your doctor's office and say, hey, do you take Blue Cross Blue Shield? They very well may say yes but they might be thinking about certain Blue Cross Blue Shield networks and not the marketplace networks. So big companies have all these different networks and the Blue Cross Blue Shield network that they use for your union or your employer might be totally different than the one that's on the marketplace. That's why you have to be very specific and say, what are you in network with on the marketplace? And if they don't understand marketplace, say the exchange, or say Obamacare, or say the ACA marketplace, but you gotta be specific. Of course, the marketplace is also want, gonna wanna know about you, your social security number, income information, which we'll go over in a second, immigration documentation. If you're an immigrant, do have that available because they will ask for numbers. The marketplace wants your household composition. And what that means is anybody you file taxes with. So not your domestic partner, 
and not your roommates, but anybody that you file taxes with has to be on that application. Even if that person doesn't need insurance, that person's name and information and income has to be on that application as well. All right. So now we're gonna talk about income. I know this causes a lot of anxiety for people. In general, it's always hard to estimate your income in the entertainment industry. It's particularly hard right now during a pandemic. So what does the marketplace want? They want to understand what your 2021 modified adjusted gross income is gonna be. There are two ways to do this. You're gonna use the way that works best for you. The first way is the easiest way. You can use your adjusted gross income from your most recent tax return. For most people, that's still gonna be 2019. So you can find your AGI on line 8B of your 2019 tax return. You do have to add in certain things like social security benefits, tax exempt interest, capital gains, dividends, and foreign earned income that then creates what's known as your modified adjusted gross income. Use this method if you think that 2021 is going to be within 10 to 15 percent of what 2019 was. So if you look at line 8b of your 2019 tax return and you think yeah 2021 is going to be within about 15 percent of that, then by all means make it easy on yourself and use that number. The problem is most people's 2021 income is not going to be anywhere near what 2019 was. So what do you do? You're going to estimate your 2021 income based on what you know you're going to receive now. What I mean by that is you're not going to just kind of wing it and say, you know what, I think 30,000 sounds like a good number or uh, you're not gonna base it on what you need to pay your bills. You're gonna base it on what you know you're going to receive in 2021 at this point in time. And for a lot of people, that's just unemployment. So if you're only receiving unemployment right now, that's all you're gonna put in. When that changes, and I know it will change, when that changes, you're going to go back into the system and add in any additional income. That's how this works. Okay. So if you only have unemployment income, that's fine. You do need to put the gross unemployment income for 2021 into the system. If you're also working, if you have a W-2 job, you're going to put your gross W-2 income for 2021 in there. If you have self-employed income, in other words, you're teaching cello lessons via Zoom, you're gonna put your net self-employed income. Net is minus business expenses. So how do you calculate that? You're gonna add up your revenue from the prior three months. You're gonna deduct your business expenses. You'll come up with one number. You're gonna divide that number by three. That's your average for the last three months and you're gonna multiply that number by 12. That's your annual self-employed income estimate. You're also gonna put in any other sources of income. So if you regularly have small amounts of interest or dividends on your tax return, you should put that in the application as well. Rental income residuals, anything that shows up on your tax return does need to be reflected on your marketplace application. This is how you build your income. Now, you do not include the $600 stimulus payment in your estimate. You can exclude any cash gifts up to $15,000 from your income estimate. And what do you do with that $300 a week payment that you might be receiving? Well, it's different in different states. So in New York, if your income is above 25520 as a single person, 
from all of the other sources that we just talked about, then you're gonna put in that $300 a week payment. If your income is below that, you're not gonna put it in. In other states that don't have the essential plan, so in all other states except Minnesota, if your income is above 17,609 as a single person, you're gonna put in the $300 a week in your estimate. And if it's below that, you're not, okay? So that's the income section. Happy to answer any questions. You can put them in the chat box and I will read them out loud at the end and answer questions then. So um, we're moving into um, you know, the second half where we talk about the different programs and how to pick a plan and stuff like that. So what is Medicaid? Medicaid is comprehensive health insurance and it includes all the essential benefits. It's free, there's no premiums, there's no deductibles, and there are very, very, very small copays, usually a dollar or three dollars for drugs. Coverage lasts for 12 months. If your income increases and you let the marketplace know, you may be able to stay on Medicaid. So states do this differently, but in New York, for example, if you go in and you say, you know what, my income is above the Medicaid limit now, I've started working again, you most likely will get a letter that says, thank you for letting us know. You're no longer eligible for Medicaid, but you're gonna stay on it for the full 12 month period anyway. It's a confusing letter, but that's nine times out of 10, that's the situation. If you're eligible for Medicaid, by all means, get on it. It's a really great comprehensive program. It's the perfect safety net right now. Um, if you live in the states that are in blue, then you live in what's called a Medicaid expansion state. So it's easier for you to get on Medicaid. If you live in the states in orange, it's very, very hard to get on Medicaid. So if you live in a Medicaid expansion state and you're under 65, I really wanna underscore that the rules change as, as soon as you turn 65. So if you're under 65, there's two ways to be eligible for Medicaid. You can look at your annual income and see if it's under 17,609 for one person or 23,792 for two people. Or you can look at your income in the current month and see if it's below the monthly income limit, which is $1,468 for one person or $1,983 for two people. Some states use current month income eligibility tests only. New Jersey and California do this. New York uses both. So you may be eligible for Medicaid in New York if your income is above 17,609 for the year, but below 1,468 for the month that you're in. If you live in a state that did not expand Medicaid, um, you have to be very, very low income. Like I think in Kansas, I think it's like, can't make more than $4,000 a year. And you have to be either pregnant or disabled or a parent of a child living with you or under the age, a child under the age of 19. It's very hard to get on Medicaid, unfortunately. What is the essential plan? This is a plan that exists in New York and Minnesota. It's comprehensive health insurance. The premium is $20 a month. So it kind of sounds like junk insurance, but it is not. It's a great program. There are no deductibles and the copays are very low. The income limit is $25,520 for one person or $34,480 for two people. The essential plan goes by your annual income, not your monthly income. Also, the essential plan uh, does not, I don't wanna say guarantee because Med Medicaid never guarantees coverage, but if you go above the income limit for the essential plan and you let the marketplace know, they will take you off of the essential plan. So they will ask you to go on to a qualified health plan at that point. 
but it is a really, really great program that many, I think in New York, like 800,000 people are on it. If you don't qualify for Medicaid or the essential plan, you can always buy a qualified health plan on the marketplace, either at full cost or at a discounted rate, depending on your income. I can't tell you what those plans will cost because they are very particular to your individual situation. It depends on what county you live in, how many people you have in your household, uh, what level of coverage you want, what insurance company you go for, what your income is, all very particular to your situation. But I can tell you that anybody in the country making less than $51,000 a year as one person or $69,000 a year for two people is going to be eligible for the advanced premium tax credit. In other words, they're going to get a discount on their health insurance premiums. You can take the APTC in advance or when you file your taxes. I have known like two people to take it when they file their taxes. Most people want this tax credit in advance because it lowers your monthly premium. The advance payments are made to the insurance company, not you. So if you are eligible for a $450 a month or let's say a $400 a month um, tax credit, and you find a plan that costs $450 a month, the insurance company gets the 400 and you pay $50 a month. If you don't estimate your income correctly and you get more of a tax credit than you should, you're gonna owe the difference of between what you got and what you should have gotten on your tax returns the following year. In other words, if you estimated that you were gonna make 30,000 and you made $40,000, you should have gotten a lower tax credit because you were making more money. So you're gonna to have to pay the difference back between what you got at 30,000 and what you should have gotten at 40,000. It's not a penalty, it's called a reconciliation. So remember that. The way to lower your risk of that is to update your marketplace application when your income changes. One other thing I wanna remind people is you will not be eligible for a tax credit if you are married filing separately. You have to be, if you're married, you have to be married filing jointly in order to get the tax credit. So let's talk about how you pick a plan um, because I think a lot of people get confused by this. Um, you're not gonna go based on, on uh, name brand, right? So all of these insurance companies are trying to make money off of you. There's not an angelic insurance company out there. It's really about how you use the healthcare system, what your doctors are in network with and what your budget is like. Those are the three most important things. So I want you to take out a piece of paper and write down how you've used the healthcare system in the last year. How many times have you seen your primary care physician? What about any specialists? Do you take medications? Are you getting treatment for something? Do you need surgery coming up? How often do you need lab work? Lab work can be expensive. So you need to think about how you use the healthcare system. That's gonna determine the level of coverage, bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. You're gonna think about your budget and you're gonna, of course, ask your doctors what they're in network with on the marketplace. If you go with an insurance company that you've never heard of, that's fine. If it meets these criteria, that's what you need to care about. So there are, there's also a catastrophic plan for people under the age of 30, but there are four different main levels of coverage. Um, not every county has the platinum level, but all counties have bronze, silver, gold, and gold. Um, bronze is the lowest level of coverage. Um, if you never ever go to the doctor and you don't believe in Western medicine, then this might be the, the level for you. It's really just there to make sure that if you if something awful happens, you don't hemorrhage money. It, it affords you that out-of-pocket cap, right? 
but it's not going to feel a whole lot like health insurance otherwise. The silver level is a step up. So the silver level, at the silver level, you might be able to find some good deals. Um, the premiums are going to be a little bit more expensive, but you might get some, you might, you're going to get a lower deductible, most likely, um, and maybe some co-pays for certain services before you have to meet the deductible. Gold and platinum are for people who make frequent use of the healthcare system, have very expensive medications, and want a much lower out-of-pocket maximum. So at these levels, you're paying more every month, but less when you go see the doctor. Most likely your deductibles are lower than at the silver and bronze levels. How do you get the most bang for your buck? When you look at that piece of paper where you wrote down how you use the healthcare system, you want to make sure that any services that you get from your plan are not subject to deductibles in those areas. In other words, look for plans that offer benefits and services that you need and use not subject to the deductible. Okay, so see if your primary care physician, if you have to pay a deductible before you see that person or your specialist. You're going to want services at a copay or coinsurance that are not subject to the deductible. Always read the summary of benefits. I know that a lot of people don't, but they have made it much, much easier to read these things. It's actually like a chart now. So it's pretty straightforward. It says, if you go see a primary care physician, here's what you pay. If you need lab work, here's what you pay. Pretty straightforward. Coming up on the end of the presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about what to do if you're uninsured, how you get care. Um, and then I will uh, take a look at the chat box and answer any questions that are in there. So if you're uninsured and you live in New York City, you're going to want to go to nychealthandhospitals.org. We are very blessed with all of the quote unquote county or public hospitals that we have in New York City. Um, and you can apply for something called HHC Options, which is a program that will uh, allow you to pay heavily discounted rates if you're uninsured. If you live in other states, go to essentialhospitals.org, click on the Members tab, and that will show you all of the hospitals across the country that uh, are required to see uninsured people at a discounted rate. If you are uninsured, never pay full price for medications. Pharmaceutical assistance programs are out there to help you. Pharmaceutical companies get big tax breaks for giving their drugs away for free to people who are uninsured. Um, you can go to needymeds.org, which is a wonderful organization, and they list all these assistance programs there. So you literally would go there, type in Lexapro or whatever your med is that you are on, and it will tell you what the eligibility criteria are through that pharmaceutical company that manufactures it for getting that drug for free through their assistance program. And it will also allow you to print out the application and you do have to have a prescription and you do have to have your doctor sign off on this, but it's a really great resource. Anybody, whether they're insured or not insured, should check out goodrx.com. This website, compares the cost of medications at local pharmacies. Pharmacies charge different prices. I'm not talking about the difference between um, brand and generic. <laughs> I'm talking that they charge different prices for the same exact drug. So if you go to goodrx.com and you type in Lexapro, you're gonna see different pharmacies in your area. And you can see here, if we look at Target, the normal retail price is $61. The Walgreens price is $177. So there's a big, big difference. You can click on these green buttons that say get free discount. And they will, if you print out that the um, discount coupon and take it to that pharmacy, they will charge you the price that you see here. 
So this is all perfectly legit. This is a website that is recommended by Consumer Reports. You can check it out. And this is how you can save money on medications. Just a word about the Friedman Health Center for the Performing Arts. Um, we are uh, in partnership with Mount Sinai Doctors. Um, so this is a partnership between the Actors Fund and Mount Sinai. Um, it is in Times Square. We have wonderful internal and family medicine doctors, a gynecologist, a dermatologist, a podiatrist. We're open late. You can make appointments through ZocDoc. We, we take many different types of insurance. Um, and you can call and make an appointment as well. We also see people who are uninsured. So if you are uninsured and you wanna to come to the Freedman, there's a special program sponsored by Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS and Bioreference. You are eligible for three office visits or telehealth visits at $40, including lab work. If you're in the industry and you've made at least $3,000 in each of three out of the last five years in the industry, and your income is above the essential plan limit. So well, the reason why we do that is because if your income is below that limit, then you should be on those insurance programs. It's a better deal. But this is a really great program for people who are uninsured and uh, making above the Medicaid or essential plan limits you can come to the Freedman to get your care. All you need to do is call the main number at the Freedman, 212-930-7300 and tell them that you wanna apply for that program. So this is our last slide. Um, just a word about advocating for change. I am a big advocate of advocacy. So I can't stress how important it is for consumers to be involved in these conversations. You can contact your state insurance committee chairs and let them know how this system affects you. If, for example, you think that uh, your state should have the essential plan that, you know, yes, you live in New Jersey, but you'd like to pay $20 a month for health insurance too, let them know that. You can go to usa.gov slash elected officials, and that's where you'll find all of your elected officials. It's a long list, it's very comprehensive. You actually have kind of maybe more power at the state level because it's easier to uh, have a conversation with your state representatives than it is your federal Congress people. But please do contact your federal Congress people as well. Um, right now in Congress, um, they are debating the stimulus um, plan. And in that plan, is a um, is a, a appropriation for a COBRA subsidy that would cover the cost of COBRA. Reach out and let them know that that's something that's important to you, if, if it is. So please do become an advocate in this system. That's how uh, it can change. All right, uh, I am going to now just take a minute to take a look at the chat box and see what questions have come in. So just give me a second to take a look at the chat and I will be reading the questions out loud in a second. Hey, Ren Renata, it's Adam while you're reading just mm -hmm. to distract you. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, just to give everybody a quick update, um, both 802 friends and other AFM friends, glad everybody could join us from across the country. Um, we, we are meeting with New York State Senator Cahill to discuss COBRA subsidies in New York, which is something the entertainment unions have done for years. Unfortunately, as Renata said, the funding um, has been dropped. Um, so we're working on that from that angle. We've been in touch with Senator Schumer's office. Um, as Renata said, the CARES Act, um, which we're trying the, the next set of COVID relief, um, we're hoping we'll have COBRA subsidies of some high percentage. Um, and we're keeping in touch there. The Senator knows it's a top priority for us at Local 802. Um, and we really hope they're gonna push it through through reconciliation. And before Renata gets to questions, I just want to thank her 
again, for her time and expertise. It is so hard to find anybody who understands this stuff, let alone somebody that is so kind and generous with their time. The Actors Fund has been not just a, a partner for us through this pandemic, but has really come, come to our aid and our members' aid for, for going on 10 months now. And I wanna thank Renata for everything. Thank you, Adam. Thank you so much. And thank you for advocating for all your members and all musicians. It's really wonderful. Um, all right, I am going to uh, start reading these questions. So somebody asked a great question. Are we calculating unemployment income for the whole year or through March? Unemployment keeps getting extended, so it's a bit confusing. Yes, it does keep getting extended and it is confusing. What you can do is you can go in and see what your uh, full claim is for 2021. Um, so there should be something in your, every state is different, but there should be something in your unemployment account that shows what you would be eligible for in 2021. And that's what you're gonna put in there. If it ends up getting extended, you can go back into the system and add that income at a later date. Um, is this $1,200 stimulus check from the spring also exempt? That's last year. We're not talking about last year. We are talking about this year. That is exempt, as is the $600. What about EIDL grants or other pandemic grants to musicians? So you should talk to um, an accountant about this, but in general, in general, grants are considered gifts and they're generally not included on your tax returns, but you do need to talk to an accountant to make sure that whatever grant you got is not taxable. My current insurance ends at the end of February, but my unemployment runs out in March. Is it still possible to sign up for Medicaid? Should I sign up for an initial plan until I qualify for monthly income of 1468 and then apply to Medicaid? Um, yeah, you could do that. So if your insurance ends at the end of February, um, you sh you now would be a good time to apply and you're going to be estimating your 2021 income, right? And so if you have unemployment income from this year and if you have work from January and self-employment income from January, you're going to be including those things in the estimate. And if that estimate makes you Medicaid eligible, great. If it doesn't, but further down the road, you find that your income has dipped and that you should be Medicaid eligible, you can always go back into the system and apply for Medicaid because Medicaid has year round enrollment, including if your monthly income is below 1468. I was on the road for three years, though when I left, I was a New York City resident. When the tour closed, I ended up staying with a friend in Florida but have not established residency. Can I still get a New York plan or Medicaid as a New York resident? So if you're living in Florida right now, a New York plan would not do you much good because all of the New York plans are HMOs only, um, including Medicaid. So it's not gonna cover you in Florida. So my advice is to apply in Florida. That's probably your best bet, okay? And residency requirements are not as, as strict as you think they are, probably. <laughs> um, okay, so is Cobra in general more expensive than full price on the marketplace? Totally depends. I can tell you that a full price bronze plan on the New York marketplace is a little over $400 a month. The silver plans are in the $600 range. The gold plans are in the $800 to $1,000 range. The platinum plans are higher. So it really depends on the level of coverage that you want. Um, but if you're going, if you're comparing your uh, union coverage with the same level of coverage on the marketplace, you're generally talking about gold or platinum level coverage. Um, and the prices, are probably comparable on the marketplace. Might be a little bit less, but they're probably comparable. If I signed up for a faith-based plan, can I cancel it and find something kosher by 331? So um, 
you need to look at the terms of the plan and see if you can cancel it, what the penalties are for canceling it. But if you are, if you live in New York, you can get on a marketplace plan before March 31st. So you can definitely enroll in a marketplace plan. You'll just have to see uh, how they ding you on that faith-based plan. Your spouse will lose our insurance this year. They can go on Medicare, but I am too young. Our income will be above 60,000. COBRA will be too expensive. How can we afford spouse's Medicare Advantage plus a separate policy for me? It will cost us about 20,000 per year, which is prohibitive. So I would highly recommend that you um, go to, I'm gonna type in right now uh, into this chat box, our, um, give me one second. The website, it's the Actors Fund. Oh no, I mistyped it. Oh, the act, I put two C's in there. Submittable.com slash submit. You can go to the Actors Fund dot submittable dot com slash submit and sign up for a uh, individual consult because that is a, a complicated situation. So you should have Cecilia on the East Coast and um, either Jennifer or Carol on the West Coast uh, advising you on the Medicare situation. And then one of our other navigators advising you on what you should get for coverage. Um, I, it does depend on your income, how much things will cost, um, but we can take a look at all of that and figure out what would work best for you. So please do at request an individual consult in that situation. If I switch careers to another field, will I still qualify for the Friedman Center and other Actors Fund resources? It's a good question. So the Friedman Health Center sees everybody, um, even those who aren't in entertainment. You would not qualify for free, I'm sorry, for the $40 office visit program because that is just for people who are uninsured in the industry. Um, but the Friedman Health Center will take all comers. You don't have to be in the industry. Um, in terms of other, other Actors Fund resources, Actors Fund is really for people in the industry. Um, so that I hope that helps. Um, I found a PPO not from the marketplace that's very reasonable. Health Shield Plus, PHCS, got the cards and all the info and my doctor takes the plan. They did charge me a one-time registration fee of $125. Should I be worried? Yeah, why don't you have us take a look at that? Because there might be things in that that you are uh, not aware of. Um, so some of these plans, for example, might say in the fine print, you know what? we're only gonna cover hospitalization on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, so please do contact us for an in individual consult in that situation. We can take a look at the guts of that plan and help you understand what you have signed up for. I have had marketplace coverage plans with my domestic partner that list individual and family deductibles with family being about twice as much as individual. I had met my individual and expected that my costs would now be covered, but the plan claimed that because the family deductible was not met, I would have to keep paying as if I had not met my individual. Is this typical? Is it legal? So um, yes, unfortunately it is legal. There are different ways of doing deductibles. Um, you can have an embedded deductible or a deductible that's not embedded. And some of these plans will require you to meet the family deductible, others will not. So you wanna take a look at that um, and see um, if you just have to meet the individual deductible or if you have to meet the family deductible. Thank you for the, um, uh, thank you very much for the, the lovely compliments. Um, so we have a great group of navigators. Um, I don't do individual consults. I do a lot of education and outreach, and um, but uh, our navigators are fabulous um, and they've been doing this for many years. And if you uh, go to either actorsfund.org slash AHERC, 
and fill out the short online form or click on the link that I put in the chat. Um, they take you to the same place where you can fill out that form and request an individual consultation. I'm really proud of our team. They're really awesome and they can help you. If I live in New Jersey, but work in New York, am I eligible for a New York State COBRA subsidy if it comes through? No, unfortunately, I wish, but that is unfortunately not the case. One year we switched insurance to another company and we didn't notice for three months that the old insurance was still charging us the monthly premium. While the new insurance was also charging us their monthly premium, we complained and asked for a refund from the old company and they said there's nothing they could do. Mm, I think there's probably something they could do. Um, you might wanna request an individual consult and see um, if we can help you with that. Um, if you disenrolled, you do have to have proof that you disenrolled, right? So um, they're gonna ask for proof that you disenrolled because the insurance companies don't necessarily talk to each other. They're not gonna know that you signed up with another insurance company. But if you have proof that you disenrolled, that should be pretty straightforward and they should refund you those premiums. Uh, SAG seems to have offered their members COBRA at an 80% reduced rate for years. That's something SAG figured out themselves separate from the subsidy program that is on hold. Yes, that is something that they figured out themselves. There are eligibility criteria for that. So um, not everybody is eligible for that program. Um, that is separate from the COBRA subsidy. Um, I can't answer any questions about local 802's coverage or what the um, plans are. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm not able to answer those questions. Um, do we know what COBRA premium would be if no 802 plan is available? I mean, premium equivalent to plan A or A plus. Again, I'm really sorry that I, I can't answer the 802 questions, but you can definitely call 802's health plan and ask them those questions. If I am expecting to get divorced soon, do I wait to apply for an exchange plan right up till the divorce is final? I will be losing my wife's plan till then. If not, when do I need to apply? Um, yeah, so this is a tricky one and it depends on if you're legally separated at this point or not. Um, uh, so uh, if you're legally separated, then you can um, apply. Um, I would again encourage you to speak with one of our counselors in this situation and we can see uh, what your situation is and if there's a way for you to uh, get on something. Just remember there is open enrollment um, in most states um, right now through at least the middle of March in most states, if not the middle of May. Um, so in New York State, you could jump on a plan um, through the end of March. In other states, you could jump on a plan through the middle of May. You don't need any kind of special enrollment situation. Um, you can just get, get on something. Um, now, let's see. Will your slides be available to us or is this super helpful resource? Thank you. Available at the Actors Fund site. Um, so I know that 802 is going to post this on their website. So you would be able to um, uh, watch this presentation on the website. Um, and I will be um, sending um, a PDF of this document to 802 that they can post as well. Um, I'm losing coverage the end of February and turning 65 in May. Oh man. Um, <laughs> so yeah, should I do COBRA for a few months? That might be the easiest thing um, to do uh, because Otherwise, you'll have coverage uh, for March and April on the exchange, which you can do. Um, and then you would be switching to Medicare in May. Um, so if you are willing to spend the money, the COBRA route might be the easiest way. But if you know money is an issue, then we can certainly help you get on the exchange. Is there a statute of limitation to get redressed from the situation with both insurers charging us? It happened several years ago. I don't know if it, this is, I don't know if you would call it a statute of limitations. It certainly will be harder to do it if it happened a few years ago, um, but why not try, right? If you have the documentation, I would, I would give it a shot. Uh, thank you, wish there were Medicare for all. Yep, 
So we're all working towards a better system for sure. Um, these are all the questions that I see right now. Um, so I'll just wait another minute. We have a few more minutes. I'll just wait and see if there are any more questions coming in. Thank you, thank you. I see there is one question. Family of four, pediatrician doesn't take Healthcare Plus and my doctors and specialists do not take the affordable plans. Is it just time to find new doctors? It might be. It's very difficult. Um, it's really hard when, you know, there's no one single plan that everybody has to take. So um, you can definitely find great doctors on Affordable Care Act plans and on Child Health Plus. Um, so you might want to think about it. What was the website to request a private consult? So I'm just going to go to, um, let me just do this real quick. Actors Fund dot org you can see this actorsfund.org slash aherc um you can go there and when you go there you can click on the hyperlinked uh word short online form under the section that says for assistance please contact and that will take you to a website where you can request an individual consult Uh, okay, I'm going to take one more question. If you overestimate your, your income for a plan with an advanced premium tax credit, will you be refunded the difference during tax time? Is it safer to overestimate than underestimate so you don't owe money? Yeah, so if you overestimate your income, they will owe you on your tax return, for sure. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I really appreciate your attention. Um, I hope this has been informative and I will definitely make those uh, make that PDF available to Local 802 and I know they're also gonna put it up on their website. All right. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it, have a great day. Good luck with everything. Take care.